welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways Coyote in the Lowlands. We're in the studio wall right now. It's very brick-like. I've got side lights and it's all really cool. We're working on this. The sunlight through the blinds part, just time of day. We're, we're working on it. The studio is coming along. I'd like to talk about a question that one of my friends has, and this is an awesome question. Does believing in free will increase or decrease the believer's suffering? Now, there's only one way for you to look at this as increasing suffering, and that is if it's external. I'll ruminate on that for a minute while I drink my water. Okay? So, does believing in free will increase or decrease the believer's suffering? And the, it's a poll, and the vote is still on increase. Increase, increase, increase. It magnifies your feelings of suffering and stuff. Uh, so I'm going to posit something here. The first step to release, to removing suffering, is the ability to choose to will to do so. So you have to have the freedom of will to choose not to suffer. If it's built in, then... How does that? How, do, how does how does free, how does not believing in free will decrease suffering? Yet I understand that it decreases your sense of creative responsibility, and it decreases your susceptibility to the programs that people put on you that your creative responsibility is somehow bad or negative, which it isn't because that's dumb. Uh, <laughs> look, free will is the ability to live your best life, the ability to release suffering, the, the ability to release from attachments. All of that stuff is free will. That's the whole thing. There is no way free will increases your suffering. You might perceive that it's your freedom of choice and freedom of stuff, freedom to make mistakes that increases your suffering because you think that it all comes from actions and outside and exterior forces like results of your actions, which are always exterior. That's not true. That's just not the way it is, okay? It's just not that way. Suffering is a perception. We've talked about pain in the past, and why we're pain and suffering, why it's not pain is suffering, pain and suffering. Pain is something you experience, you know, you, 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 you jam your toe in the stupid Trader Joe's shopping cart. I've actually done this twice recently because I'm wearing flip-flops and I went to a Trader Joe's, which is always an amusing experience because they're, it's a very entertaining store. It has like all of these little programs and, and memes that just run through it and people go there for a sense of actual like, like people go there and buy literally the same stuff in the same package but with a different label that you could get at Walmart or like Safeway or something that they feel like they've engaged in a meme or a program or something where where their excesses buying bad foods, buying candies and, and stuff is, is better because it's Trader Joe's. It's really interesting. But Trader Joe's in particular has a uh, they're a grocery store chain that has a very compact store layout. Um, they do this on purpose. There's square footage and stuff, but they have carts that are narrower than my gate. Okay, so the carts are like 24, 26 inches wide, and they're actually narrower, um, no, 18 inches. They're, they're really small carts. They're narrower than my normal gate, okay? Um, I have very wide feet and just, you know, if I'm just walking or whatever. I don't tend to walk the single file Sioux Indian line kind of thing. Um, and so I jam my, my pinky toe periodically if I'm not wearing close toed shoes on their carts. Their carts specifically because I'm in a grocery store so my, my brain body interface whole thing goes into grocery store mode and if I'm, if I'm paying attention it works just fine but if I lose it for a moment and I go into regular grocery store mode I'll jam my toe. Anyway, the difference between pain and suffering when you jam your toe on a Trader Joe's shopping cart is the pain hurts. The suffering is putting the tension on it and dramatizing it 
and adding it to your to your list of traumas and adding it to your brain and doing all the stuff. That's the suffering. That's all something you choose to put in there. Suffering is a direct result of choice. Period. Free will is the only way to get rid of suffering. All suffering is something you choose that's on some level. Okay, if you don't have free will, you can't get rid of it. And I realize that what I'm saying indicates that if you don't have free will, you can't choose to suffer either, and there's truth to that. Your free will, of course, is buried at the bottom of a pile of, once again, trash. So, you know, you have to take out the trash to get to the free will. You, you build stuff up on the free will. Religions and social roles and parental expectations and your friends and your marriage. and All this stuff gets piled up on top of your free will until you can't see it anymore. And you think it's not there. But it's the very core of how you act, literally act, create, um, uh, how you how you respond how you are creatively responsible for existence is free will it's all right there at the bottom so yeah that's that's it's interesting because there's a poll on this and the poll is pretty pretty dramatic it's um right now it looks like it's about 60 percent increase free will increases suffering and 40 percent decreases and that's really interesting to me because this is this is the poll that's out in the normal public. This is a poll that is pretty much targeted to enlightenment people. This is the Buddhist crowd, the weird uh, Jewish Buddhist guy who blocks me every other week because whatever I, I don't know because I have Jewish friends. I think is actually why, or more specifically because I make really bad jokes that I learned from a Holocaust survivor. I think that's what really gets him. Anyway, he's. Um, whatever, atheist, occultist, Buddhist Jew guy. Um, and enlightenment people, Buddhist people, like it's all, it's all psychedelic people, it's all those people in there. So having that many people who think that free will increases suffering is really astounding to me. But I've been coming to terms with that a lot recently that, you know, when I look at, you know, I look at the enlightenment people and they're going to a festival to be all like peaceful and enjoy, so they crochet an eight foot Ukraine flag because it's the message of the moment and I'm like wow like just wow the programs the programs the programs you know everyone's susceptible to programs I'm susceptible to programs but man is it bad so it's not surprising to me that you know these are these that these these are people who believe that free will increases suffering but it's just not the case you can't get rid of suffering, you can't lose suffering, you can't alleviate, you can't free yourself from, you can't release the big thing here, release and cancel the suffering. You can't release it without free will. You just can't do it. So my answer is free will not only decreases suffering, but is essential to relieve any sense of suffering. Stay sideways, that's all I got.